A burning question on human mind has always been, what is death? You know, public enemy number one. That's how death can be described. For truly, it will slay us all, and at a time of its own choosing. But paradoxically, although we all know we will die, very few know exactly what death is. Certainly death must be at least understood, although most relentless enemy. Yet it need not remain a mystery to those who will look into their Bibles to read and believe what God says. For God has not left us in ignorance about this important subject. The basic doctrine of the Bible, while since life is merely a temporary mortal chemical process with man being made from the physical elements, dust, death is just the cessation of life. One who is dead has no consciousness separate from his body and feels no pain or pleasure but is as if a he has fallen asleep. So such a dead person is actually sleeping. He is not, he is unconscious and he does not have an immortal soul and does not continue to live. Hence, they choose instead to believe the lie Satan told Eve when he said, you will not surely die, Genesis 3 verse 4. They believe that within this dusty body, as a sort of prisoner of the flesh, is an immortal soul that is unleashed at the death of the body and that continues to conscious life forever. To be sure, man is not merely an animal. For one, man is made in God's image and in God's likeness, as it's written in Genesis 1, verse 26 and 27. And man's potential, that of being born into the God family, is far more incredible than the fate of any animal. Further, God reveals that there is a spirit in man, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. There is the spirit, a spirit in man that gives man mental superiority over animals. It is this spirit that imparts the power of mind to man and the power of moral decision, including the ability to grow in character. But the spirit is not the man, and it is not an, an immortal soul. It is something in man that gives man a dimension of life above the animals, It does not give him immortal life, however. To understand death requires that we know that man's life is merely a chemical process involving physical elements. When that process stops, we die. We are dust, and when we die, our bodies decay and return to the dust. When we die, all conscious thought and awareness ceases. Notice Psalm 6 verse 5. For in death there is no remembrance of you, In the grave, who will give you thanks? And compare Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 4 and 5. For him who is joined to all the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. The Apostle Paul knew that even the righteous die and lose consciousness and bodily presence, For he stated in Acts chapter 2 verse 29, Men and brethren, let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Verse 36, For David did not ascend into the heavens. You see, even righteous David was not an immortal soul that left his body and went to heaven. Even David was dust and decayed back to the elements. Other scriptures supply even more detail about death comparing it in a figure of speech to sleep, like 1 Corinthians 11 verse 30, or 1 Kings chapter 2 verse 10. When a person is asleep, he loses consciousness and is unaware of his surroundings. The topic of death is, in some ways, unique. Most people will not believe what God says if their senses tell them differently. For example, Adam and Eve did not believe God's warning about the tree of good and evil because the fruit of it looked good and desirable. Yet, in the case of death, people will not believe God when he says death is indeed, is what it indeed appears to be to the most casual observer, namely, the cessation of life. People will not believe God no matter what he says, whether our senses tell us to agree or not. But caution, nothing said here means to imply that death is the end of all hope of life. It is not. 
An old saying goes, where there is life, there is hope. But God says, in fact, that even when, where there is death, there is still hope. In fact, the main hope. That hope is the resurrection of the dead, from death to life again. Notice Job's question and answer about death. Job chapter 14, verse 14. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. Now realize this. This demonstrable fact of the resurrection of the dead proves once and for all that humans are not immortal souls. If they were, they would... Why would the dead have to be resurrected? They would already be alive. And see further Christ's startling statement in the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse 25. Most assuredly I say to you, the hour is coming... And now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of Man and those who hear will live. So Jesus knew his statement might startle his audience. So he said further in verses 28 and 29, Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation or judgment. Now the scriptures are plain that all people will be resurrected, even those who will eventually be cast into the lake of fire to die the second death. The Apostle Paul chose, he actually chose to comfort the living relatives of those true Christians who had died by reminding them of the wonderful resurrection to come, and he gives them that hope in First Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 through 18. To alleviate their sorrow, Paul explained that the dead in Christ will be resurrected at Christ's return and that they will forever be with Christ. Yes, the truth about death is far less foreboding than the fanciful imaginations of well-intentioned but errant religionists. When properly understood that this topic of death can fill us all with real hope, for then we know the wonderful truth that we will see, we will all see our beloved deceased relatives again. Therefore, it may be well to note especially the basic scriptures that describe the, the truth about death. Here are some of those scriptures. Genesis 2, 7 and 3, 9. Man is mortal being made from the dust. Genesis 1, 24. The Hebrew word translated soul in Genesis 2, 7 is translated here as living creature and refers to animals. Ezekiel 18.4 and Ezekiel 18.20 and Matthew 10 verse 8, the soul is not immortal, it dies. Psalm 6 verse 5 and Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 4 and 5, the dead have no consciousness. John 11 verses 11 through 14 and 1 Kings chapter 2 verse 10, death is compared to sleep. Now John 5 verse 25 and John 5 verse 28 and 29 and First Corinthians chapter 15, the dead will be resurrected. In conclusion, dear friends, death is indeed an enemy, but through the resurrection from the dead, this enemy is annihilated. Therefore, Paul says in First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 26, as well as verses 54 and 55, that the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruptible and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is thy victory?